The Whistler. And now, The Whistler's strange story. The Chief. It seemed incongruous to James Matthews that he should be in Mexico City for five months and yet know so little of the city except his office where he worked and the apartment where he and Rose lived. Back in San Francisco, James had always visioned Mexico City as a romantic paradise. So far, there hadn't been time to find out if this were true. His life here was no different than it was back home. No different than it had been all the years being married to Rose. Dull, uninteresting years. And he'd ceased to think of her as anything but a meal ticket. A foolish little woman with money. Now, as he sat in the living room, he decided that this night was more than typical. It was a perfect example of his life with Rose. With growing irritation, he watched her flutter about the room, parading back and forth in front of him in a sheer evening gown. Why do you do that, Rose? Do do what, Jimmy? Keep walking up and down like that. Oh, well, I, I have a good reason, Jimmy. Don't you see? Oh, there you go on that again. You know how I hate to be called Jimmy. Oh, well. If you don't stop that silly parading, I'll leave the room. Oh, oh dear, such nasty nerves. You do suffer, don't you? All right, all right. I'll sit down. Thank you. Don't you notice something different, Jane? About me, I mean. A new dress. Yes, like it? Blue is not a good color for you, my dear. You watch the smile fade from her lips. A pained, hurt expression sweeps over her face. But it doesn't matter, does it, Jane? You cease to worry about her feelings a long time ago. So now there are more important things to think about. You lean back in your chair, close your eyes, try to concentrate on the business deal that brought you here to Mexico City. You try to reason the chances of its success, but Rose won't give you a moment's peace with her constant chattering. James, where are you going? To bed. Oh, Jimmy, I I, I mean, James, I, I want to talk to you. Please. Can't it wait till morning? Poor darling, you're so tired. It'll only take a moment. Okay. I, uh... I never complain. You you know that. Rose, what do you want? Well, it, in San Francisco, you work day and night. I never saw you. Oh, I, I, I mind it all right, but at least I... I had my friends to fall back on. Yes, yes, get to the point. Why, why can't we go home? How many times must I tell you? This is not a vacation. This is a business trip. There are plenty of opportunities in San Francisco. Do you think it's everyone who gets a chance to develop a gold mine with Mallard Gunther? I know how much it means to you, dear, but I... If you want to go home, Rose, go. Oh, how would it look if you didn't come back with me? Then stay. And stare at four walls? If you'd only go out, meet people, find some new friends. Well, I, I try. No, you and that inferiority complex. You're too shy, Rose. He, he said we'd be here only a month or so. My business is keeping me. Look, do you think I want to go on being dependent on your money? I wish I could believe you didn't. Well, I don't. And Gunther is my chance. I, I don't think he is, Jane. I'm convinced you won't make a cent out of this venture. If I really thought Now, that... wait a minute. If you're going to start questioning my business judgment, Mallard Gunther has made more money out of mining than any other man in Mexico. Mr. Gunther, yes. But what about his partners? I've never heard of any of them making money. That's because they weren't smart enough to have faith and stay with him. Because they went running off before the projects could develop, and that's one mistake I don't intend to make, Rose. So instead, you'll keep on putting more money into the mine. There won't be any need of putting any more into it. And besides, I don't want to talk about it anymore. 
Good night. Alone in the bedroom, you try to calm yourself. You can't let Rose upset you, even when she comes so close to pointing out what you fear the most. You tell yourself there's nothing to worry about. Gunther doesn't sink his money into anything unless it pays back big returns. The partnership with Mallard Gunther is the opportunity of a lifetime, isn't it, Jane? Yes, the money you'll make will mean much more than respect and power, won't it? It means independence. Independence from Rose, your wealthy wife. You'll have your own money then. And if you want to, you can leave her for good. The following morning, you hurry to the office. Gunther's been out to the mine the past few days, and you expect him back. You wait all day, but he doesn't return. That evening, you close up the office, wander down the street. At the corner, you step into a small cafe. As you make your way toward the bar, you hear his laugh above the crowd. Mallard Gunther. You see him sitting in a side booth with a dark-haired girl in a bright red evening gown. Her arm is linked with his, and she's whispering in his ear. <laughs> Mind letting me in on the joke? Oh, Jimmy, my boy, Jimmy. Well, well, well. I was waiting for you at the office. Oh, were you? Well, I just got back a little while ago. I didn't think you'd be there, so I didn't bother to call. Uh, uh, sit down, Jimmy. Sit down. Sit down. Thanks. Oh, uh, this is, uh, is um, uh, Sally. <laughs> she dances here. Sally, I want you to meet Jimmy. Martha. Huh? Oh, yes, Martha. <laughs> it's right, isn't it? Excuse me, my dear. How are you, Martha? Hi. Uh, uh, Jimmy's a business associate. That's fine. How'd things go at the mine, Mallard? Fine, fine. We're coming right along, my boy. Coming right along. <laughs> Gonna be a real bonanza, Jimmy, my boy. Now, uh, how about a drink, eh? No, uh, no thanks. I, uh, look, did they get the generator plant installed on schedule? <laughs> For sure. Right on schedule. Not a thing to worry about. Just leave that all to me. My department, you know. Well, sure, but I would like to know what's going on. Is that all you have to tell me? Well, I, uh... Can't think of anything else. I oh, uh, except that we may need a little more money. More, I. Oh, no, now, now, don't be upset about it. it won't amount to much. I, um, uh, I figure around twenty-five thousand apiece will see us soon. Twenty-five thousand. Hmm. More or less. Well, what's the matter? I bother you. When, when will we know definitely if we'll need the money? Oh, we should know by tomorrow. And you can get it to me any time in the next uh, day or so. Unless, of course, you want to use that option clause and sell out to me. No, Mallard. I'm not selling out. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> I uh, always like a partner who'll stick it out. <laughs> so many of them seem to give up at uh, this stage of the game. <laughs> oh, no, look, my boy, you'd better change your mind and have a drink, huh? <laughs> Sally here is getting thirsty. Well, there it is, Jane. The thought of having to spend another 25000 disturbs you, doesn't it? But not nearly as much as the realization that Rose was right. The added money means nothing to Gunther. But unless you can match it, you'll be forced to sell out to him on his own terms. And you don't intend to do that, do you? No, you'll meet him at his own game with the help of Rose's money. As you hurry home, you decide your attitude toward Rose will change. You'll be patient, understanding, give her the affection she wants so desperately. But when you arrive at the apartment, she isn't there. An hour passes and you begin to worry. Then you hear the key in the door. Well, well, what's this? Oh, oh James, you're, you're home early. <laughs> you certainly sound happy tonight. And for a very good reason. I'm terribly proud of myself. Are you? I took your advice. Oh, I don't follow it. Oh, shy, am I? Oh, that's what you think. Oh, I merely said oh, that. Oh, I... I know what you said, and I'm going to prove you're wrong. 
Remember Juan, our taker? Mm, seems I should. He's in the mining business, too. You introduced him to me when we first arrived. Oh, yes. Rather elderly man, tall. Where'd you see him? In the lobby. I was on my way to lunch. I made a point of speaking to him. And you know what? He invited me to a party. And I went. Good. All by myself. Not the least bit timid. Not the least bit. Oh, I had a grand time. This house was forming with such interesting people. A, a French painter, a Hungarian composer, and... Oh, I, I've been invited out to several other parties, too. You yeah. have? Well, that's... Fine, Rosie, fine. I'm delighted you had such a good time. You're vaguely disturbed with the way things have turned out, aren't you, Jane? But at least Rose will be kept busy with her new friends. And she'll stop talking about going back to San Francisco. You decide to seem pleased with her new interest. And the next day you wait for Gunther in your office hoping he'll bring you the good news that you won't have to invest an additional $25,000. The day seems endless, and then finally Gunther arrives. Well, Jimmy, my boy. <laughs> Jimmy, we're close to one of the biggest strikes in the history of Mexico. That's what I like to hear, Mallard. <laughs> I can pick him, boy, can't I, eh? You sure can, but we will need the extra money. Huh? Oh, uh, well, yes. I guess we'll have to drop a little more money into the venture, my boy. I see. How much did you say? Well, uh, it's a little more than I figured last night. 35000 each should do it. 35 Oh, yes, yes. Here, uh, check the papers yourself. All right. I, um, I'd like to know today what you decide, Jimmy. I can... I can tell you now, Mallard. I'll deposit the money in the morning. Sounds good, doesn't it, Jane? You'll deposit the money in the morning. What money, you ask yourself? You throw the reports aside and hurry home. You arrive just in time. Rose is dressed, ready to go out. You don't waste a second coming right to the point. You tell her how much money you need and why. But, Rose, you'll get your money back ten times and over. Oh, really, James, I'm not interested. Now, please. I have to go. I'll be late. There's a million dollars at stake. We can't lose. No, no, dear. Once and for all, I won't give you the money. Rose, listen to me. Not now, darling. I've got to go. Go. Go where? Oh. Oh, didn't I tell you? Remember the American I met at Ortega's party? Well, he, he telephoned the day. He talked for over an hour. George Turner, an engineer, I think. He, he's down here designing bridges and, and all sorts of things. All right. I'm not interested in George Turner. I well, only I want... am. He's quite charming, and he's invited me to a lawn party. But the Ortegas, I'm late now. You're not going anywhere until you sit down at that desk and write me a check. You're being idiotic. Rose, come back here. See you later. Rose! Don't wait up for me, dear. The knowledge that Rose stands between you and your independence. And you know why she won't give you the money. She's well aware that she'll lose you if your plan with Mallard Gunther turns out successfully. One thing you're sure of, Jane, you have to be clever now, patient, if you expect to get the money from Rose. The next afternoon, you approach Gunther. Oh, Jimmy, I was about to send for you. You uh, sort of forgot something, didn't you? <laughs> you, uh, you mean the money, of course. Uh, no, I want to speak to you about it. Something's come up. I'll, uh, I'll need more time. Sure, Jimmy, sure. You don't have to say another word. It's simply that I have to turn one of my investments into some cash. Take all the time you need, my boy. I understand. Well, thanks, Mallard. <laughs> now, let's say we give you, uh, uh about, uh, three days. Three days? Well, you should know I'm easy to do business with, Jimmy. Yeah. Thanks again. Well, James, now you know where you stand with Mallard Gunther. Yes, with everything going so well, 
He isn't worrying about you. The squeeze is on, and to remain his partner, you must get that money from Rose and soon. You'll have to play the loving, attentive husband, won't you, James? Back at the apartment, you call out to her, cheerfully when you come in, but he isn't there. And the clerk at the desk downstairs tells you that she left hours ago, leaving no message as to when she would return. Yes, James, you're more than annoyed, and the next hour is the longest you've ever spent. Finally, your nervous pacing is interrupted by the ringing of the telephone. Hello? This is uh, James who speaks? Yes, who's this? Juan Ortega. How are you? Oh, oh wonderful. Yourself? A slight case of the gout, but outside of that, I cannot complain. No, oh, it's nice hearing from you. Yes. Uh, your lovely wife asked me to deliver a message. Very kind of you to do so. You know, we were all over at George Turner's house until he took the whole crowd out to his ranch. George Turner? Yes. Uh, she tried to reach you, but couldn't. So I said I'd call for her. I see. They probably won't get home till late. Oh, thanks for calling. Not at all, my friend. Uh, we must have lunch together sometime. Yes, yes, we must. Well, good night. Good night. It's frustrating, isn't it, James? You're ready to give in to Rose and she isn't even around. And the next day and the next, it's no different. For Rose is too busy to accept any of your invitations. It's lunch with George Turner, tennis with George Turner, a theater party with George Turner, George Turner nights and days. Then on the morning of the third day, with your anxiety reaching a point where you no longer can contain yourself, you arrive to find Rose in the living room arranging some flowers. Morning, dear. Rose. Good morning. Did you ever see such beautiful flowers, James? Rose, what do you say we go out for breakfast? Drive into the mountains. So sweet of George to send him. Isn't he thoughtful, James? You didn't answer my question, dear. I've never met anyone like George Turner. <laughs> He's grand, absolutely grand. Rose, aren't you listening to me? Breakfast anywhere is impossible. Oh, I have to shop for a new dress. Well, we'll make it for dinner, then. I can't. I'm going to a party tonight. Rose, this is... Well, it's ridiculous. It's getting out of hand. I I won't stand for it. Now, James, really. Isn't it a little late for all that? Rose, come back here. I'm sorry, dear. I said I had to go shopping. You stand there motionless, bewildered to the point of wanting to smash everything in sight. The tension is almost more than you can stand. And you lean on the desk to support yourself. Then you happen to look down. Notice Rose's calendar. You start to turn away and then glance at it again. Only one line has writing on it. You read it carefully. George, cocktails here, five o'clock. You read it again. So George Turner is coming here to your apartment. You stiffen, then turn suddenly and hurry out. <laughs> The rest of the day seems unreal, doesn't it, James? Though you've made up your mind what you must do, it doesn't seem like it's really you who is carrying out the necessary preparations. You must figure out a way to get Rose's signature on a check for Gunther. And then you've got to make certain that she doesn't stop payment. Early that afternoon, you take the first step to ensure the success of all your plans. Si, senor. May I help you some flowers for someone? Yes, I, um, I want a corsage of orchids. Si, senor. Do you wish a card? Yes. And write this, will you? Till five tonight, love. Sign it GT. Now take them with me. Uh, si, senor. Si. That's all you'll need, isn't it, senor? Now you head back to the apartment taking your time, so that when you arrive, it's exactly four o'clock. There are few people in the lobby, but you want it that way. When you open the door of your own compartment, you find Rose dressed in a new evening gown and standing in front of the mirror, putting on her earrings. Is that you, James? Who else? You startled me. What are you doing home at this hour? And with flowers, for me? 
Yes. Oh, let me have No, them. no, no, not now. I have other things on my mind. Oh, my. You sound so serious. I am serious. It's about the money for Gunther. Oh, so it's the money you're worried about. Yes. You know what this is, Rose? It's a bank note. So what? It's made out to me for $35,000. All it needs now is a signature. My signature, I suppose? Yes, dear. Your signature. Well, give it to me. I'll sign it. You, you mean it? Give me the pen, darling. You'll see. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, there you are, James. Now, in the morning, you could run to the bank and cash it. You forget, darling. I did that a couple of times before. Once in Los Angeles, once in Seattle. While I was on my way to the bank, you telephoned and stopped payment. You really enjoyed doing it, too. Yes, I did, didn't I? But on those occasions, I had good reason. I, I found out you were being swindled. You've inferred that Mallard is... Is it dis- swindling? No. No, I haven't. Only that he's a smart man. And you aren't. Will you go to the bank with me tomorrow while I cash this check? Of course not. Let's change the subject. Look at this. It's a music box. George sent it to me this morning. Isn't it lovely? I wind it. <laughs> now, listen. Hmm. Oh, that is pretty. Uh, James, you actually found George Turner care so much for me. Of course I am. And I'm glad you're not going to stop payment on your check, too. I need that money, Rose. Very badly. <laughs> Something I can do for you, Senor Matthews? Well, I just want to use the house phone here. Truly. This is Mr. Matthews. Will you give me my apartment, please? Hello, Rose. No, I'm downstairs. I forgot to tell you, if you want to reach me, I'll be working at the office late. No, no, I won't. What? Oh, the clerk. Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye, dear. Ramos. Do you say you're much of? My wife's expecting a friend at five. You can send him up without ringing. Muy bien, señor. Well, everything's arranged after all, isn't it, James? Everything. Now, holding tightly to the check Rose just signed, you return to your office. Mallard Gunther is there, puffing smugly at a cigar, his feet up on the desk. Well, Jimmy, I was beginning to think you'd left for the day. I had an errand to run. Now, if you need any more time, Jimmy... Time? ...to raise the money. Oh, I've got the check here, Mallard. I'll have the girl deposit it in the morning. Oh? That's great. Hope I didn't put you to too much trouble. Not too much. No. isn't it, James? Your freedom and independence from Rose is already won. And there's a bright future to look forward to. In your own office, you wait for the inevitable phone call. You expect it around 5.15. But when 5.15 arrives, the call doesn't come. Six o'clock passes. 6.30. You can't understand it, can you, James? And then suddenly, instead of the telephone ringing, there's a knock on the door. Come in. Senor James Matthews. Oh, I, I'm sorry this office is closed. You'll have to come back tomorrow. Uh, sorry, senor. I am Lieutenant Garcia, Mexico City Police. Oh? Is, is there something I can do for you? I think it would be foolish to waste words, senor. Oh, what are you talking about? Your wife. She has been murdered. What? A gentleman by the name of Juan Ortega discovered her. Juan Ortega? He found her at 6.30. She had been dead over an hour. Well, but... But when I left her, she was all right. She was all dressed, expecting someone for cocktails. Uh, Senor George Turner? Yes, that's his name. He, he sent her flowers. He was to meet her. You are wrong, Senor. You were the last person to see her alive. You killed her, Senor. Me? That's not so. 
You're inventing all this, trying to trap me into something no, I no, have nothing... No, 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 senor. Juan Ortega told us the whole story. But I tell you, Turner was to meet her. He sent her flowers. You send the last flowers. I am certain the florist will identify you. All the rest, she sent herself. If you Americans do not understand these things. You see, she was worried. You didn't love her. She wanted to win you back. So she invented George Turner to make you jealous. There never was such a man. The Whistler, previously released by CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, for listeners in the United States, has been rebroadcast for American servicemen and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, voice of information and education.